Okay. This is better than, like, typing all this out. Okay. We're just going to say this because why would I want to post a million freaking posts? First of all, I'm the YouTube chick. Um, long story, but they're making a documentary about my life. I know. It's weird. Can't explain it all right now. But that's exactly what's happening. Okay. So my husband's a truck driver. Okay. Cool. I'll have a life. <clears throat> I make more money than Tim does. So he doesn't want me working. Of course. I work 10 hour days, make more money than Tim. So I give that up because I understand that after 29 years, Tim doesn't want to see me bust my hump. He wants me to see me grow as a person. He totally gets that. Okay. So Tim was home for seven days. I'm a vegan. I'm an activist. I speak at universities. Believe me, I'm busy. But this time, all new low. Tim bought a truck from his brother. Behind my back. <clears throat> he said, I'm in Houston. What are you doing there? Getting a truck. Why? I told you I was going to get a truck for my brother. I said, no, you didn't, Tim. So we had to go through that hurdle. He apologized. He's sorry. Blah, 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 blah. The truck was a hot mess. Hot mess. It broke down every other day. Which I already knew his brother would do this to him because he's not a good person. I've told Tim this a million times. He knows he's not a good person. Okay, so first we have that problem. My, t my Tim likes to go out on the ice road. Yeah. So the whole time he's out there, you're terrified. Okay. I had to grow from that. I grow all the time. Okay. My sister dies. He's not here. So my girlfriend flies in from California because I don't have any good friends here in Colorado because they're all drinking and all doing some kind of life. So I give them up because I'm like, why have friends if they're going to be losers? Okay. My kids are raised. I've had kids since I was 15. They leave. They all live far away. Tim and I's daughter is a mess. She's 28 years old. Doesn't know what she's doing half the time. She's a liar. She's this. She's that. Nothing like my son. It's like a curse with Tim and I. This daughter. She gets pregnant. She has her baby. Tim's not there. Okay. So I go back to church. It's something I've struggled with for 20 plus years. I go back to church because I needed it. I, I needed it for myself. I was angry at God. I grieved my sister. Ever since my sister died, suddenly, she just got up one day out of the bed and died. My sister was like my best friend. My other sister got killed in a drunk driving thing, hit and run. My brother killed himself. Yeah. And my son died. I've walked through all that by myself. Tim listens to me. He hears me. He's a great listener, but he doesn't hear me, which drives me crazy. So I start this chronology of my life and these young kids from the university was like, we want to film you. And I was like, okay, it's like a project. No big deal. A whole documentary starts. I'm like, what? Me? But my life is interesting. It really is because I speak on death and dying and all this other stuff. And I was in school. I finished my degree, but I've been a hairdresser for almost 30 years, but I make more money than Tim. I don't necessarily want to work because <clears throat> I'm a better person. I've grown because when you're out there making big money like that, you lose your soul. Long story short, <coughs> Tim buys a truck. He's now independent. He wants me to find loads. What? Okay. So I start finding him loads. Then his friends call. Can you find me a load? Because I'm really good at it. I mean, I'm pretty much good at anything I do. So I start finding them loads. Not fun. So I'm a vegan. I grieve. 
I have everybody dead in my family. I don't speak to my mom and dad because of what they did to us as kids. I'm combating every fear. I go to Katrina. Nobody helped me. Yeah, Katrina for five months. In my car, helping people. That's what I believe in. Comes like, oh, I can't come. Yeah, I know. Might take you out of your comfort zone. I had $10,000 put away. Why didn't I put it in the house? I'll never know. I bought this house with my son alone. It was money I made. My son and I put our names down on it. Tim was off in the wild blue yonder. I didn't want to be with him anymore. This has happened like 10 times. Because 29 years ago, almost 30, I met Tim. He was the greatest guy. I fell in love instantly. But I was a little bit of a gypsy. I was like, whoo, hottie patati was out there doing my thing. I like younger guys. I was doing all this stuff. My kids were young. So I raised them as a single mom, took care of them, met Tim right after my son died. But Tim and I couldn't stay together. We just couldn't keep it together. He wanted me to marry him. I'm like, nah, oh, 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 I ain't marrying you. I love you. I love you more than anything. I am in love with you, but you have anger issues. Tim has a horrible, foul temper. So do I. So, 29 years ago, we lived in this little mobile home. Tim says, my dad has a house down the street. We should move into it because we don't have to pay rent or anything. And I love that little mobile home. It was like me, my son. I, I wasn't pregnant yet with our daughter. <clears throat> and I liked it. It was just everything I needed right there on the base in Lemoore, California. Well, I move into this shack. Yeah, it was a shack. Trust me. And Tim goes to go work because at the time he was a carpenter. He wasn't a truck driver. And he can't make a living. Now, in my family, if you can't make a living, you're a loser. Like, that's the truth. If you can't make a living, you're a loser in my family because we're all hard workers. So I leave him. I have my baby. I come back to the shack, and I'm like, I am out of here. I call my parents. They send for me. I'm out of there. I take my son, who is not Tim's father, and I take my little baby, and I go back to mom and dad's, and I work every day in their restaurant. And I make a living. Here comes Tim again. I love you with a dozen roses, which is my weakness. Diamond ring. Tim moves in. He can't find work. My parents are like, get him out of there. So I kicked Tim to the curb again. And my parents just didn't respect him. They didn't respect him. Tim was a great guy. He was really handsome. And he would just, he was a lot like his dad. He was like, you know, not irresponsible, but more like over here, over there, doing this, doing that. And I'm like, dude, over here, like focus. And he couldn't. So I kick him to the curb and I go off with this other guy. I'm like seeing him, dating him. I take off. I go do my own thing. I've done that for 20 years because Tim... And Tim said, I want to be a truck driver. And I said, are you kidding me? My dad had a restaurant and truck drivers came through there. My dad was like, don't you ever marry a truck driver. Because back in the day, they were considered like low lives. Pretty much like they, they treat them now. But this is back in the day. Like back in the day. And I told Tim, if you ever become a truck driver, I will never be with you. Because my father gave me the horror story of these like low life guys. Well, I didn't know I listened to my dad. So Tim remarries and he has two kids. He never shows up again. Like I'm here raising my two kids. I don't know where Tim Thomas is. He, I end up in court. Let's just put it that way. And Tim owes me like $800 a month. And there's this girl and she's pregnant. And I'm thinking that's where I was. So I gave her all my baby clothes. I actually met her. Her name's Jackie. She had nothing. She was like me with Tim. But now he's a truck driver. So my daughter's in Head Start. I'm down at the Flying J working just for extra money. I didn't even have to work because I lived at my aunt and uncle's property. I didn't have to pay a dime in rent. Um, I was just there raising my kids. I wanted to work at the Flying J. I wanted to work at the field desk because I had worked as a waitress. And I was going to go over there and work at the Flying J. So I'm down there down the street. And this guy walks up and I see a pack of Marlboro's. And a freaking Coke. And I look up and I said, you can run, but you cannot hide. 
because he's not helping me take care of Kim. He, he's just off doing his own thing with this woman. Come to find out, it's like his third cousin or something. It was so creepy and weird. I was like, peace out. He takes his wedding ring off, and he goes, I'll marry you in a second. Why would I want to be with him? I already had two situations in which he did not take care of me. I'm raising my kids on my own. Kimmy wants nothing to do with him because she doesn't even know what, who her dad is. So I go on with my life. He's married to this woman, Jackie. He's going to come see Kimmy. He actually didn't spend any time with Kimmy. He was trying to get back with me. And I'm like, what? There's this pregnant girl here. What? So he has two kids with her. Nine years goes by. He pops up again. I'm like, you owe me $800 a month. He was making big money. Big money. I hear like, I love you. My marriage ended. Hmm. Now, I'm a hottie patati. I have young boyfriends. I'm having fun. I'm a single mom busting my hump. But it don't matter because I'm, I'm like, whatever, dude. I don't know who you are, what you're doing. I know nothing. All I know is I fell in love with you before we had our daughter, and you have never taken care of me, so why would I trust you now? Sorry, I put my medicine on my face. So, we get married. Tim shows up again. And I marry him in 2005. A year later, he pops his temper off. I'm like, get out of my house. I don't care if I married you or not. Married him at the courthouse. It was a flip thing. He said, marry me, Cindy. I've always been in love with you. I haven't been with anybody else but this one woman. Which Tim is very, very... He was really handsome, but Tim wasn't one to go off with women and do things. So, here's his two, my two stepchildren. Now, mind you, as soon as we get married, they want to move in with me. Because I have a house. I mean, I have a life. Like, they're with that crazy woman. His third cousin by marriage or whatever. And I don't even know this one. Like, I don't know that much about her. I don't know anything. And all these rumors are flying around. Well, I married him on a fluke. Thinking, if I married him, maybe he'll finally be the man he's going to be. And so he works down here at the local... He used to be able freeways. That's what Tim did. So he gets off the truck. He'd work in, he was working for Combine. And he gets off the truck. And Tim's making great money. Now, I'm doing hair. I'm making about 2000 a week. I don't even need this guy. I can do whatever I want. We get married and he blows his temper over this guy I had dated. And this guy wasn't even around anymore. He was 22 years old and he texted me. Tim flipped out. Very jealous man. And I said, what are you doing? Why are you flipping out? So we separate again. Because he has got a foul temper. He doesn't hit women, but he 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 just gets up in your face. And, and I said, get away from me, Tim. And so I give him two black eyes and I rip his lips apart right here. I said, don't you ever get close to me like that again. Because he had a bad temper. So when he gets close to you, you're like, he's going to hit me. So I freaked out because I'm a girl from the streets. And I got on his back like a monkey and I pulled his lips apart. and busted him in the eye and gave him two black eyes. So we're supposed to go to a therapist. He's living in Denver with some weirdo friend from the freeway building thing. He's, they want to make him a superintendent. That's how good he is at building freeways. And, you know, if anybody knows Colorado, they were building that real big major freeway. So Tim's out there making a good living. I'm making $2,000 a week. I don't have nothing to do with Tim. And I don't need to put up with his crap. So I jump over Tim because he gives my face. I said, Tim, back up, back up. So we go see this therapist. And she said, listen, when she tells you to get out of her space, you need to. And when you're mad, you need to go downstairs you know, calm down, blah, 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 blah. So, Tim doesn't show up for one of the therapy appointments. And I said, Tim, I'm here to pick you up. Let's go. He don't want to get in the car. So I'm like, dude, Lee, get the hell out of here. I don't need you. So I kick him to the curb again. Now, I've only been married a year. So, here goes Tim. On the truck. Now, all the kids are messed up because he's a truck driver. He was never there. He was this. He was that. He had a bad temper. All this stuff. But he's starting to calm down now. So, I married Tim. I go down and I file divorce papers. I'm like, boom. I'm rid of you. I don't have to deal with you. Your foul temper and your weirdo ways. Like, I don't have to deal with it. But I never went to the final date. I thought if it was uncontested that you would just be divorced. 
loco. So, I finally stopped dating these guys, and I settled down, and I'm going to school. And this was four years ago. And Tim showed up, like he always does. I'll open the door, and he's just standing there smoking series, like, hey, baby doll. You know, and I'm latched back in. I have this mad love affair with Tim. But all these other things are there. I said, Timmy, what are you doing here? And he said, I love you. Be with me. I don't care if you're my wife or not. I said, I divorced you, Mr. Man. I served you on the truck and everything. He said, are we divorced? I want to see those divorce papers. So I go down the basement, and I'm looking for these divorce papers, and I don't find the final decree. He goes, go down to the county with me. Let's see if we're still married. Guess what? We were still legally married because I'm such an idiot. So I look at Tim. We're there for three days, and we're just staring at each other like, oh, crap. We're still married by law. So we go to another therapist, and she's like, you're still married. I mean, I said, what do we do? Get a divorce and start over? What do we do? Because he's so handsome. I and mean, when he shows up, it's just like, oh, my God, he's so handsome. He has all this personality, you know. For now, we're still legally married. So I go down, I buy me a wedding dress. I want a wedding. And I've changed. And Tim has changed, too. He's been doing this truck thing. And I say, Timmy, I love you. And if you want to do truck, let's do the truck. Now, mind you, in this last four years, he's been really pushing me. But we ain't agreeing that every three weeks he'd be home, no matter how much money he made. I gave up doing hair so Tim feels confident that he can take care of me because of all those other years. And his kids start jumping in. I need money. My kids, my daughter start, I need money. Because he's like an ATM for them. So I said, Tim, stop. You need to pay off this truck. Fix the truck. Live your life. And we need to have a life. Everything that's in this house, I paid for. Except for that TV. And the other one. Tim does not know how to accomplish things. He's a great truck driver. He makes good money. But he doesn't know how to complete things. He's one of those people that is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. His father never did it. His brother never did it. Nobody's ever done it in Tim's life. His kids don't know how to do it. But Kimmy's strong because I raised her. Now, she wants her daddy in her life, but she wants money, money. That's all she wants. So he gives them money because he you know, feels guilty because he's never there. That's a long story. The short of it is this. Tim promised me to always be home every three weeks. We've managed to stay together over a year. That's, that's big, 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 big time. We don't see a therapist because I believe if we address our problems that we individually have, that Tim and I can grow. Now, I've been growing. Tim takes a little bit longer. But I know Tim loves me. I know he'd do anything for me. That's why I fell in love with him. He's a great guy. I mean, he is a great guy. But he changed his mind like the wind. So Tim wants to be on the ice road. It's like, Tim, you're not 25 anymore. You're going to be 50. No, uh, uh, uh. these are $30,000, $40,000 loads. You know what? I haven't seen one yet. So four months ago, Tim takes off to Birmingham, Alabama, where his brother lives. Don't tell me I got to beef with him anyway. He's just a jerk, 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 hands down a jerk. He doesn't have parents anymore. They died. He didn't even go to their funeral. And to, I go, what are you doing in Alabama? Well, I'm going to go to Alabama because I'm going to get a, a drop deck trailer because I want to run drop deck and, um, and I'm going to go to Alabama to pick this up. And then while I'm in Alabama, I'm going to run some local loads coils until they get my tags and stuff. Oh, okay. So goes to Alabama, he breaks down. I'm used to breakdowns. Oh, my God, happens all the time. He broke down because of this truck. So Tim breaks down. He's mad because Tim has put... $30,000 in a truck that was worth ten grand. He was supposed to pay ten grand on this truck. Which, by the way, his brother never keeps track of payments. I do. I have every agent in the world calling me. 
I said, Tim, I cannot load you. You're broke down. I know. I know. And the temper starts. I said, Tim, when you calm down, call me back. Mind you, I'm growing a garden. I have a life. You know, I have my doggies. I have no friends because of all this weirdo. I'm clean and sober. Let's think about that, too. Not that I was a falling down drunk blackout, but I had a problem. I, I, I drank to not feel things. I smoked pot not to feel things. Now it's legal in Denver, so, you know. But I ain't going to do it. I've been clean and sober for years. Tim never drinks. Never. Okay. Tim breaks down in Alabama. The tags don't show up. I said, Timmy, the reason why the tags aren't showing up is because somebody has forgotten to do their job. One of the things that Tim's worse at, too, is he doesn't stand up for himself. And then he builds up anger, and then he blows up. And I said, Timmy, stand up for yourself. Somebody's not doing their job, because I'm one of those kind of people. I'm responsible, I'm reliable, and I get the job done. He wants me to go out in the spring. I'm like, no. Because I want to build my own life, because... I love Tim with all my heart, and I've spent time with him in the truck, but I'm not giving up my life anymore. I've done it, and I've given up a lot of things to be with Tim, and I'm fine with that. What I'm not fine with is the refusal for him to talk about intimate issues on the phone when our whole lives are lived on a phone. As a matter of fact, he had to have these iPhones so we could FaceTime. That hasn't happened either because Tim's in remote areas, so guess what? You don't get to see your husband. So he's not making any money. He's sitting in Birmingham, Alabama. Agent, his big, big agent that gets him those big, big loads goes into the hospital. And I've said to Tim, don't ever rely on one person. So he doesn't drive local in Alabama when everything straightens out. He goes right to Houston. Breaks down again. Now we've put maybe 100 batteries in this thing. He had to fix the whole front end. He had to put good mirrors on it. He's... He won't even let me get in this truck. That's how bad the truck is. Why would you buy a truck that bad? It was on word. Because Tim's a nice guy and he believed his brother and he knows his brother's a liar. So, Tim breaks down in Houston. So he's not getting paid. Now, mind you, I'm a Scrooge. I hold on to every single penny because I can't depend on Tim a lot of times. So I put money away so that way I can cover the mortgage. And I see me starting to dip into that little bit of $3,000. And I know right then and there, something's wrong. And there's no pay coming in. And boy, oh boy. And then the heater goes out. Now, by that time, he had a load on the, on the truck. So he's got to go, right? My daughter had her baby. Crap. He ain't there. He has a load. He's got to go make money. I'm dipping into the I'm dipping into the money, the money, the real money. And I have credit cards, but <sighs> the interest is so high because his credit sucks. So my daughter has her baby. Tim's on a load. He's got to get out of there. He's been stuck for like five weeks. His brother's driving him crazy. He didn't even go to his house. That's how bad it was. He's broke down 52,000 times. He finally gets a load on the truck, and he's headed right for Canada. Now, I know the weather's bad there, so I know I'm not going to be able to talk to Tim. I, he won't have reception. Because they charge him a lot of money to talk in Canada, no matter what plan you have. So, now Tim's on his way to Canada. The heater goes out. The next day, the electricity goes out. I can't eat without all that stuff. I don't know what's going on with the heater. I don't know how to fix the electric, but I'm running around fixing everything because I'm smart like that. So I go down. I now, mind you, I don't want to go to Walmart to get some heaters because we ain't got no money. So I'm thinking, man, I don't want to spend the money on heaters. I'll just freeze. So I freeze for two nights. It was like 10 degrees in this house. So he goes, baby, go get you some heaters. That's another thing Tim does. Go get this. Go do that. Go do this. You know what? Fuck you. I'm going to do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. And I don't listen to you because if I left it up to you, we wouldn't still have this house if I had have listened to you. So. Now I'm defeated, right? My husband's not calling because he can't call. He breaks down again. At this point, I'm just like, 
He's like, I'm it. Now, mind you, when Tim's upset and things are not going his way, you have to deal with his mouth. Like, so when he calls you, he's either depressed or he's with his anger. And he's not saying like, hey, baby, I love you. You know, we can get through this together. So I tell him, I'm going to divorce you. I have never had an electrical problem in this house and I've never had no heat when it's left to my own devices because I'm a very, very responsible person. I knew the bills were paid because I paid it myself. I have like $1,500, but the first is coming and I know the mortgage is due and the HOA and everything else. So I go get the heaters. My friend fixes the electric over the phone. Um, back where I used to live in Palm Springs. I call the heater guy and it's like 40 bucks. It, it's an old heater. And he said it may not light again. I'm like, crap. But I have these little heaters, so no big deal. Everything's falling apart. Toilets are plugged. I'm fixing them. This is going wrong. That's going wrong. This is going wrong. That's going wrong. Now, I do that every single day. Every single day. Now, if I worked... We would not be having any of these problems, but I don't want to go back to work because then I lose my soul because I have like millionaire women that come to me and they, nee, 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 nee. have you had a rich woman complain to you every single day? I've done that for 20 years. So I got sick of that. I kind of lost my soul there. I used to take me to Puerto Vallarta, like all this stuff. Well, I don't want that life anymore. I want a simple life. All Tim talks about is new cash, new house, new this. F you. Why don't you pay for the house you got? Which I obtained. I lose my garden, which I worked six hard months for, let me tell you. And I had 11, turn, you know, I had 11 hailstorms. Destroyed my garden. I stayed with it. I stayed with it. I st now, I'm just coming out of that defeat. Timmy takes off. He's breaking down all over the place. He needs a new battery. He needs this. He needs steer tires. He needs this. He needs that because he's going to go on the ice road. He don't care. Him and this guy is going to run the ice road and make $40,000 at a load. It ain't never materialized yet. Not one time. Six, seven thousand here. By that time, you're behind, so you're catching up, catching up, catching. You're always catching up. At this point, I'm eating lentils three times a day because I was smart enough to go down and buy it in bulk. I start going to church because I'm changing my life. I love church. It's the one thing I do that I love, other than gardening and being a vegan. And But this is what I'm trying to tell you. Why would I clean the house? For who? Me and a couple dogs? For who? Like, why do I want to scrub a wall? Why do I want to sit and watch a movie? We've already done all that. It's like, go up to the garden, I'm just like, oh. why? Why? So I can live my life? I've had it with him. I've really had it. Like, Tim, I've done everything in my power to not say nothing to you so you don't give up. He was sick. He was this. He got 100 miles from the house, and he got the flu. It's not that I desperately want to see Tim. It's that I want to keep things together. It's not about vacations. It's not about getting my hair done at illustrious living. It's not about diamond rings. It's not about all those things, you guys. I'm a good person. I don't want those things. I want a stable life. Some stability. Not a lot. So then I hear a noise in my car. Now, I've owned this car for over 10 years because I don't want to make another payment. And he has shitty credit. I hear a noise in the car, and I start worrying. Because if something happens to that car and there's no money, he has, okay. Then he turned in his paperwork late. So I had the money for the mortgage, the HOA, and I'm sitting here looking at a $500 phone bill, and I'm like, if I pay that, I have to eat lentils again. Which one do you do? So the phone ain't been paid. Tags are due on first on my car. Yeah, the car doesn't get repairs. Yeah, that car. Um, um, 
But I'm supposed to be supportive. I'm supposed to be loving. I'm supposed to be understanding. I'm supposed to have patience. And I'm not crying right now. You know why I'm not crying? Because I'm too angry. You know why I'm too angry? Because I'm sick of it. You know why I'm sick of it? Because he keeps making those decisions. So now they're breaking the law. Not the trucker law. It's more like a, a company rule. Like you don't go and get a crane and go load it on your own. So they're having one truck driver come with a full load and they're going to go to Scotty's house. They're going to get that crane, which is kind of smart if you think about it, LTLs, and they're going to split that load on both trucks and they're going to get two pro they're going to keep one pro number and they're going to go turn in those two loads. Which by the way, nobody that's receiving it is going to say anything. But it is kind of pushing it a little bit. But now he's frantic. He wants to make money. Fine. So he calls me this morning. What do you want? A new car? Or for me to pay off the truck? I flipped right there. I didn't say anything to him. I flipped out in, you know, Trucker's Live group. This is my life. I'm always the stronger one. I'm always the one that has the faith. I'm always the one. And I'm sensitive. I'll cry. But I'm tired of crying. Over what? Spilt milk? Over truck driving? Over loads? Over no money? Over what? 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 What am I crying for? For for because Tim wants to make a living? I get it. I used to make a living too. It's not about making a living. It's about keeping your word. It's about the supposed truck he was buying that was supposed to make a lot of money. Yeah, that truck, don't get me started. He could be on the company's side and make more money than he's making right now. This truck was supposed to be, if you seen how much money he put in this truck, you'd be like, that's ridiculous. I got, so could have gotten that same money and put it towards the principal in this house and shaved off like four years. I could have got that same money because I'm thrifty, like, we need new, we need a new floor. We, okay, we need a new floor. Trust me. I don't have new pots and pans. I don't have all this fancy. The only reason why I have this furniture is because I bought it. Tim's not a bad person. It's not that. It's that if you say anything negative, he goes down under. If you start crying and get home as soon as I can. God, you're so upset. No, Timmy, it's because you've pushed it. You've pushed it to this point. That's what I want to say to him. You pushed it. You've risked everything. You've put our marriage on the line. You are greedy. You. Now, mind you, these LTLs may not work out because he's trusting Scott. Well, they might work out. I mean, they, they very well could. And if I didn't have my girlfriend Linda to fix all this, I didn't want to fix it. I wasn't going to fix it. Nope, I'm not fixing LTLs. I'm not doing it. It's been eight foot over wide, this, that, this, that, permits, go over here, go over there. No, I'm not doing it no more. You know why? Because Tim doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. So he calls me this morning. Do you want a new car? Or do you, what else did he say? Or do you want me to pay off the truck? What kind of shenanigans is that? Pay off the truck. Take care of the things that you need. Keep it in perspective. First of all, the first thing I would do is fix the car and get steers for the front of the truck. Then I'd put that money away and wait. 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 Because when all that falls apart again, which we've been going through for the last four years, if when all that falls apart again, when you can't pay mortgage or you can't do this, or you can't do that. I had a clean record before Tim came in here. I see you get so mad. You pick them apart. You get so mad. You forget who they are. I'm over here worried about masturbation. Like I'm worried about things like that. Like how do I keep my sense of self and not take it personal? It is personal. It's, <laughs> Oh, I'm just so sick of it. I rode my butt. Canada, my butt. Alaska, the islands, it's $3,500 just to go across the ferry. That's like mortgage for like five months. Like, you're going to get on that ferry? 
That's $3,500. That's a lot of money to me. That's a month of bills right there. I don't eat a lot. I don't this. I don't have that. I don't have new pots and pans. I'm not this Uber thing. I make all my own food. I go buy everything in bulk. I go over here for a deal. Go over there for... The car's got a noise now. Oh, God. I hope it doesn't break down. This, that, the other thing, this, that, the other thing, this. I don't live behind the hog. Do you see my three inches of roots? You know what? I think I've earned the right to go to a hairdresser and have her do my hair after 20, 30 years of doing my own hair. I don't get facials. I don't go get my toes done. And you get manicures. When I was working, I got three massages a week. That's how hard I work. So I'm sick of dealing with the drama. I'm sick of having to tell Tim Thomas what's more important. I'm sick of not being able to cry because he might freak out. I'm sick of like making ends meet. I'm sick of him not remembering the goal. He's changed the plan 20 times. And I said, no, this was our goal. I told you, Tim Thomas, that when there's 6,000 in the bank and everything's paid and the truck is paid for, you can come home. Like, because he wanted to work at home. So he could be here every night or every two days. I went in and he was going to deliver mail. Well, he needs a car. Don't you think a car is important? I need my own car. Is that okay? Is that too much to ask? That I have my own car that I paid for? Thank you very much. I'm not saying Timmy hasn't given me beautiful things. He has. There are times he goes out and buys me a $500 necklace. Do you see it on me? No. You know why? Because it's guilt. Don't give me guilt gifts. Give me security. Give me a future. Give me love. That's all I want. But if he calls me one more time, see what he's saying now. If he calls me one more time, depressed, sick. When he was 100 miles out, I was like, don't come home. He goes, I'm not going to come home. I said, don't come home, Tim. You know why? Because then you'll make me sick and then I'll have to suffer for 10 days by myself, which I do all the time. I'm not bitching at you guys. I'm telling you the truth. I'm sick of making ends meet. I'm sick of putting a string together and hoping it doesn't break. I'm sick. Go to work, Cindy. You know what? I've worked all my life since I was 15. I'm going to be 50 in March. I think I earn the right to be a housewife. He says he loves me. There he is. Decline. You know why? Because I'll pop off right now. And if I pop off, guess who's going to pop off right after me? Tim Thomas. You know why? Because he hasn't grown. Grow, Tim Thomas. Get better at your anger. Get better at being loving. Oh, when he's here, oh, it's a shit storm. He sits there on the chair. You sure are pretty. Thanks, Tim. I'm busy doing a million things because I have a million projects so I can have a life. What are you doing? Cooking. What are you doing? Mopping the floor. What are you doing? As he takes his bag upstairs because he's lived like a filthy pig. I'm clean. He's filthy. He's lived like a filthy pig in that truck. I go to take his stuff out of the... Don't, 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 don't take my stuff out. I'm embarrassed. Yeah, you're embarrassed because you didn't wash your clothes for three weeks. Go wash your clothes at the freaking Flying J. My stomach hurts. Yeah, because all you eat is hot dogs and beefaroni out of the can. Why? Go buy a meal that's hot. It's not that big of a deal. Then he comes and eats my vegan food on the second day. First night puts his big old log legs on me, and I can't move. And then he says I'm sexy. Sexy? Tim, I don't even know who you are right now. I'm getting used to the fact that somebody's in the house. I'm getting used to the fact that the 52 kids who want something, and they want Daddy to run and come over and see him or something like that. You know, I got problems all the time that I deal with for Tim. 
That's why I'm making this video. Because then when you watch it, you'll go, oh, I get it. It's like, then the third day. Hey, sweetie sugar. Timmy, could you please pick up your coffee cup? This isn't the truck. This is your home. Then he splashes coffee all over the carpet. The carpet I need replaced? Yeah, that car. If I even showed you the carpet, you'd be like, oh my God, because I'm sick of doing it by myself. He needs to come home and shampoo these carpets so he knows what it feels like to work his butt off in this house to make it better and pull the strings together. Then he comes home and he runs to Safeway and buys me all this vegan food. He has every good intention. That's not the point. I can't eat any of it. It has a milk product in it. Because he doesn't pay attention. I would never do that to him. Never. Then he tries to take the dogs out of their training. They've been trained to do this. Then he cheated. By the time I get to know my husband, he's gone. Woo, down the road. Maybe, maybe we have some time together. Maybe. It just depends on his mood. It depends on his mood. By the time he gets here, I don't even know who he is. That's how much time he spends on the road. You would think I have $100,000 by now. You would think the car would be brand new. I don't want what other women want. I just want a life without stress and problems and breakdowns. And, and these are all his decisions. Not decisions I made because I'd have never bought a truck from his brother because he's a loser. And then he says, I'm going to get off the truck. I've heard that so many times. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't want to cry to Tim because he doesn't know how to react. He said, you know, one time he told me a long time ago, I feel like I'm a prisoner in this truck. And I don't know how to be a regular person. Yeah, I know. I know. One time he actually said to me, this is how much growth I've had. He said to me, he goes, you know what? When I see you this happy... I'm upset. And I go, why? And he said, because you're happy without me. I said, yes, I am. I have to be. Do we have a choice? We could sit there and feel sorry for ourselves. And then where do we end up? In the room with bonbons? What are we going to do? I'm just pissed. I'm tired of it. If you want to get off the truck, get off the truck. If you want to be on the truck and run the ice road, run the ice road. Shut your pie hole. Oh, you're going to start pulling oil now? Oh, my God. After living the Dakotas? No way. I am not living in 52 inches of snow. I barely can stand this place. Then he said today, we should get a new house. What are you talking about? See, these are the kinds of things he said at 22. This is ridiculous. And then he apologizes for it. And I'm like, Tim... Quit apologizing and just change it. This is a long video. It's probably going to be in my documentary. Not my documentary. The documentary. Try to quit smoking. I can't quit smoking. I'm a vegan, non-GMO, whatever, great natural chick, and I smoke cigarettes. Is that a, not a hypocrite or what? I'm hiding it because... It's like the only thing I have left that, that that's just mine. I don't know how to sleep with somebody in the bed. I used to have boyfriends. Oh, yeah, I was a whole lot of trouble. Trust me, and I could probably still do it. But I don't want to be that person. I want to love Tim with my whole heart. I want to give him all the love he deserves. I'm sorry you had a bad childhood. So did I. But you got to grow from it. Mm-mm. He doesn't have to grow because he's on a truck. <coughs> I want to smoke a joint right now. I want a shot of tequila. I want to have a cocktail every night. So I can just sit here and be like, but I abuse that right. I know I'm rambling, you guys. I could care less. Just sick of it. Sick of making ends meet. Sick of his promises. Sick of his broken promises. Sick of sitting on the phone all the time and him not FaceTiming me. I'm so sick of Tim Thomas's world. I'm so sick of Tim saying our marriage is important and then calling me this morning and asking me if I want a new car. You know what, Tim? What about the heater that's not coming on? Did he ever think that? The heater, Tim. 
My face is detoxing right now. That's how much self-improvement I do. I lost 60 pounds almost. I've done my part. It's, I know, he worked hard. He's a truck driver. You know what, man? Life is easy out there for those men, in a sense. Because they don't have to deal with human relationships. They don't have to grieve. They don't have to be here for holidays. They don't have to deal with the kids. They don't have to do it with anything. Tim puts his foot up on the window and is like this going down the road. That's how many years he's driven a truck. 30 years. So if you're going to be a truck driver, be a truck driver. But come home so I can maybe feel like I'm married. It's ridiculous. And I'm sick of him coming home and acting like a weirdo zombie. He does it to himself, you guys. He can pull over and sleep if he wants to. No, he does 95 on the ice road. 95 miles an hour on 400 miles of stretch of ice road. Where's the $20,000 paychecks? Where's the $10,000 paychecks? He hasn't gotten anything more than $7,000. And in that two months, I had to pay every bill and everybody off. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Call it bitching. Call it what you will. I don't care. Sick of it. I got this shirt at Walmart. I don't go buy Nordstrom's anymore. I don't have fancy clothes anymore. I don't do... It doesn't matter. Life is happiness inside. But if he never comes home, how am I supposed to build a relationship with Tim Thomas? On the phone? I should have never agreed to this shenanigans. I should have never agreed to it. When he said he was sorry, I just looked at him and I said, you know what, Tim? You failed yourself, not me. Because I'm not failing myself. But what makes me angry is the constant phone calls. Just like, see what happened? Because he feels like talking. And I want to say, you know what, dude? Last night when I was sad... I wanted to talk, but you were too busy sleeping because you're up all night because you're pushing it and doing 95 in the middle of the night so none of the cops catch you. I know exactly what you're doing. Hitting the pedal to the metal and going freaking apeshit. He'll sit and rest for a day and crash because he hasn't slept in four days and he does that to himself. Other truck drivers sleep at night. Other truck drivers push it really hard. You know what Tim Thomas does? You have no idea. He goes 95 miles an hour on a Canadian road in the thick of winter. And he doesn't want me to worry. Don't you think a FaceTime is due now? He's in the United States. That's not me. You guys trust me. It's not me. It's not me. It's him. It's him. He chooses this life. He chooses not to be happy. He chooses to never fulfill his dreams. He chooses this. He could have been a superintendent or owned a construction company by now. But he's stuck in that truck. Like he said, he's a prisoner. Yeah, I know. I'm a prisoner too. Go to Walmart for what? I can go look at things I can't have? What am I going to go to Walmart for? So I'm going to walk around in Macy's and go, I wish I had that. I'm not going to do that. My girlfriend bought me this Starbucks cup two years ago. My daughter bought this for me. Recyclable. I got a chapstick. I don't want big things. You know that we've never been on vacation? Ever. Not even for a day. We don't drive up to the mountains and go to a cabin. Because he's too busy fixing that truck that he bought on his own and apologized for. And then he wants to bitch to me because loads fall through. I don't want to hear it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of calling 52 agents trying to figure out how to get Tim Thomas out of a mess that he got himself into. And sometimes it's not his fault. I understand that. He's the one that bought that truck. Just like I bought this house. I'm smart, huh? Just sick of it. I'm sick of not knowing my husband. I'm sick of him coming in so tired he can't even think. And he does it to himself. I'm sick of him pushing it so hard because he wants to come home. And then he gets home and he doesn't know how to be intimate. And he doesn't know how to just be normal. Because he's been in the truck for so long. He does it to himself. Trust me, ladies. He does it to himself. And he doesn't change. 
And if he doesn't change, and I threatened him with divorce already, I'm going to get those papers. And I told him, and you will come down there with me, and you will file those papers. Because I'm not going to tell you how much you're worth anymore. You need to know how much you're worth, Tim Thomas. Period. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it anymore. The big money, the big score, the big this, the, the you know what? I'd rather have, rather have him work for Wiley or wherever he wants to work. Combine. We did double drop deck with fragile glass through the ice road. Didn't crack one piece. Don't tell me he's not a good driver. I know he's a good driver. I've watched him. Go out on the truck with him. Why? So I could sacrifice my comforts? How am I going to keep my vegan food? Where am I going to eat that food? See what I'm saying? Where do, where do I begin and he ends? Where, where does he begin and I end? I don't know. That's how much I want to cry. It's up to like here on crying. But if I cry, his whole world crumbles. Because he thinks he's doing the best thing for me. He's not. He's doing it for Tim Thomas. And he's selfish. And you know what? I'm sorry. I miss him. I love him. I've always been in love with Tim Thomas. But I'm sick of his shit right now. Sick and tired of being. Sick and tired. So I made this video to finally put it in my documentary so finally I can say the things I really want to say to my husband and I promise you it will be in the documentary and I promise you the frustrations of my life will be put in a documentary and I will send you all a copy. I'm madder than hell and I'm not going to take it for very much longer. He's pushing me to the edge and I'm going to jump and when I jump, he ain't going to have nothing. I told him one night, I said, you know what, Tim? What would you do without me? What would you do without me? You'd have nothing. You know, he has, a, he has a closet full of clothes that I bought for him, and he doesn't wear them. Do you know that my husband doesn't even know how to open a closet door? Oh, but he sacrifices his life. No, he'd still be out in that truck, and that's what I told him. You know what, Tim? If we broke up, you'd still be on the truck, you'd still be miserable, and you'd still be unattached to human beings. I said, you know why you don't talk to people on the truck stop? Because you've been out there for 30 years and you hate their guts. I know, you hate them because you hate yourself. I know, Tim. I know all your secrets. Get your shit together. Keep the goal. Don't you want a new car? I don't want a new car. I want to pay this house off so when we get older, we have somewhere to live. Whatever. I need to go to church in a bad way. And I mean bad way. So I can keep my head together. And it's not to keep him on the road. Trust me, I have a life without Tim Thomas. But how am I going to stay in love with Tim Thomas if Tim Thomas never comes home? What happened to the fancy phone so we could FaceTime each other? What happened to that? His phone bill is still $700 a month. I know every person he calls. It's not a woman. <sighs> Whatever. He had the flu, so he didn't come in. I understand that. I'm alone. If I get sick, there's nobody to drive me over there. I get it. I'm just sick of it. Tired of it. Don't want to hear the complaining anymore. Don't want to be the better person. Don't want to rise above it. Don't, 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 don't. He's pushing me to my edge. I'm going to flip out. I'm going to have an anger burst at any second. And he deserves every bit of it because he's changed the plan a million times. And I've had it with him. Keep the goal. And if you say you're going to do something, fulfill it. And if you want to be a big fat jerk and stay on the road like that, then your marriage is going to suffer. And if you don't take a vacation soon, guess what's going to happen? We're going to forget why we're even doing this. That's my point. I'm done ranting. I'm putting this on YouTube. Tim Thomas is going to get the link. F you, Tim. Come home. Oh, you don't remember where that's at? Thank God I don't go to work. If I went to work, he'd pay so bad. It's his ego. It's his pride. Done.